Music is very much a living, breathing uh, thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's alive itself. When I was around five years old, uh, I was listening to a recording uh, that my father played. and It was kind of a fateful moment because he, he said, after he had explained what a record was and that it had sound and music on it, he said, would you like to hear one? And I said, yes. He said, pick. And there was a wide variety and my little finger happened to land on a Beethoven symphony. And I remember the sensations. I don't remember in great detail because I was five years old, but I do remember being captivated by the sounds and the landscape of sound in a classical symphony. And um, I actually listened to the entire symphony that day and I asked for more later. So over the course of several weekends, I think I listened to all the Beethoven symphonies at five years old. The first orchestra that I ever heard live uh, was the Rochester Philharmonic. So being here now as the music director is a little bit surreal for me because I remember sitting up in the loge up there many times with my family and watching. I remember fighting with my sister over the binoculars because we wanted to look at all our you know, favorite sections and favorite instruments up close. I think it might have been my youth orchestra director uh, who talked to me about it uh, articulately, you know, for the first time and sort of articulated what a conductor does. It was Dr. David Harmon. He was the youth orchestra director when I was in the Rochester Philharmonic Youth Orchestra. And, um, and then when I realized that, I thought, well, that's what I want to do. That's fantastic. I skipped a year in high school, went to Juilliard when I was 16 years old, and then when I was 18, Actually, after halfway through my second year, uh, I was appointed principal trombone uh, of the Lyric Opera of Chicago. So I left school to go to Chicago when I was 18, and I, I started, uh, just dove in, really, to the professional world. Uh, and I played there for six full seasons. And while I was in the orchestra, in the Lyric Opera Orchestra, I also subbed a lot with the Chicago Symphony and uh, once with the New York Philharmonic, which was amazing. So I was playing with really great orchestras. But then I had time in the off season to really pursue my end goal and my, my main dream, which was to become a conductor. And my first conducting uh, position was with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I was uh, the League of American Orchestras conducting fellow there when Esa Pekka Salonen was music director. I did that for one year and then I went to St. Louis where the St. Louis Symphony uh, hired me as their resident conductor and I was there for four complete seasons and uh, I've been back many times as a regular guest uh, since then. Um, I've conducted a lot at the Lyric Opera Chicago and uh, some in Europe and kind of all over the place. For the last two years I've been really guest conducting uh, and so now it's, it's wonderful to have a home base and have a fantastic orchestra uh, of my own. I look forward to doing is inter interacting a little bit more directly with the community, I suppose. I, I don't want there to be any perception that we as classical musicians are unapproachable or up on some, in some ivory tower or you know, in a wax museum. I mean, we're very much accessible. I'd like to really increase our footprint in the community. I'd like to bring dynamic programming uh, in the sense that we have something that the audience likes and is familiar with and will recognize but also some new things so we challenge challenge the ears a little bit but we have a thread of familiarity so people are rewarded for coming to the hall and hearing a piece that they've known since their childhood. It's not just building the relationship with the orchestra, you're also building a relationship with the public and so I look forward to doing that and I want, I want to have that interaction and, and that feeling of, of a connection with them. Thank you.